going to give you three reasons today why lost people like being Catholic. First and foremost, they'll say over one billion self-righteous Catholics can't be all wrong. I mean, there's a lot of good people in the Catholic Church. Yeah, sure, there's some bad ones, but there's bad ones in every church. Um, but hey, there's over a billion of us. God couldn't send all of us to hell, could he? Let me show you a big problem with that. Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 through 12. John, in the book of Revelation, is called up to heaven. And what does he see? It says here, verse 9, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain. And as redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. He's not just talking about Jews, in other words. He's saying this is out of every um, kindred, tongue, people, and nation. So this includes the Gentiles as well as the Jews. Certainly the Christian church. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Now, no Catholic would be against that. No Catholic would say, well, I wouldn't want to be in that number. Any Catholic that knows anything at all about their own teachings would say, well, yes, I th would think that I would be included in that number. I mean, Matthew chapter 22, verse 30, I'll just read it here. It says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Okay, in the resurrection you're like an angel. So what's it say there? Verse 11, And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. What is 10,000 times 10,000? That would be 100 million. Okay, do the math. 100 million and thousands of thousands. So it would be a number under 200 million. Obviously, because if it was over 200 million, it would have not said 10,000 times 10,000. So some number over 100 million and less than 200 million. Um, wait a second. How many saved Catholics... Or people, members of the Catholic Church, are there supposedly in the world right now? Over one billion. But here in the book of Revelation, it's less than 200 million. Less than one-fifth of the supposedly current members of the Catholic Church. Uh-oh. What was that about? You know, one billion Catholics couldn't be wrong? But if you look in the Bible... When John gets up to heaven, he only sees less than 200 million resurrected saints. I know that the Catholics, saints are demigods, but I'm, you know, they're lower, just less than God. You know, Saint Joseph, Saint Christopher, Saint this, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. Saints in, the, in your King James Bible is actually meaning somebody who's saved and goes to heaven when they die. That's a saint. I have a whole study on that. Um, but, you know. Redeemed people in the resurrection, they're as the angels of God in heaven. John sees them and it's less than 200 million, but the Catholic Church right now says over 1 billion. Now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a dumb hillbilly, I guess, but uh, I don't think 200 million equals 1 plus billion. And the other big problem that you have is we're talking about the entire time that the church has been on earth. Those who are redeemed out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation in approximately 2,000 years. It's only just over 100 million. Kind of a problem for the Roman Catholic Church. But hey, I mean, maybe the difference, maybe they're still in purgatory and they didn't make it there to heaven quite yet. You know, in their Revelation chapter 5, it's the, the 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands are the ones that have gone through purgatory and they're out, and the others are just kind of in limbo someplace. Oh, wait, yeah, uh, purgatory's not in the Bible. Hmm, yeah. Problem number one, okay? The other problem is, you say, well, well, all these people couldn't be wrong. We're all working our way to get to the same place, aren't we? We're all trying to die in the state of grace. Well, that's another problem because it contradicts Scripture. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. 
uh, that's kind of a problem for Catholic doctrine. Um, for all the different things that the Catholics have to do, all the seven sacraments and everything else, and, and uh, all the you know penance and, and all the other auricular confession and everything. And I have the books. I have a whole library down here of Catholic books, the catechisms and the original uh, 1610 Dewey Reams down there, reprinted for Catholics. I have all that stuff. Teachings of the Church Fathers and, and all kinds of different things down there. So I know what Catholic doctrine is. I'm not some ignorant uh, Bible-thumping Protestant or something. Uh, no, I, I know Catholic doctrine quite well. I've studied it for many years. And uh, that's why it doesn't line up here, because I understand. Right? So problem number one, you say, well, I want to be a Catholic. Lost people like being Catholics because, hey, there's safety in numbers. We can't all be wrong. Well, the Bible itself proves you wrong. The Bible itself proves that there are not one billion saved you know, believers resurrected to be like the angels of God. There's not one billion in the book of Revelation, chapter 5. It's less than 200 million. And that's the entirety of the church age, the entire time since the beginning, the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, until John's resurrected in the future. Hmm. That's a big problem. Point number two, another reason why people like to become Roman Catholics is for the power, fame, and fortune that comes from being part of the right papal groups and uh, the connections that come there. Secret societies, fraternities, sororities, knighthoods. Let's look about that. Revelation chapter 17, you say, well, that, that's just, this is conspiratorial. I refuse to listen to whatever... Let's see what the Bible says. Revelation 17, verses 1 through 5. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. You've got to get in bed with the Vatican if you want to get anywhere. Do you ever hear that? Um, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. You want some money? You want some power? some fame, get connected to the Catholic Church, and you'll get it. Verse 3, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-collared beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar. Purple archbishops, scarlet cardinals. Huh. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Hold the mass up. You elevate the, the wine. Golden cup in her hand. Holy Mother Church. Verse 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Hmm. Very clearly the Roman Catholic Church. There's no question about it. I mean, show me any other system out there that has kings and presidents and all kinds of political rulers going and meeting with the head of that religion, with the head of that system. All of them come and bow before the Pope. All of them come and they have their black on and the women have their veil on their face and the Pope comes out in his white and, and you know, and they're, you know, just whatever and blessing them with his blessings, papal blessings. You aren't going to get anywhere in this world unless you are ready to fornicate, spiritually speaking, and sometimes physically, if you get into the right systems, spiritually speaking with that Catholic Church. And you know it. But what does it lead to? 1 Timothy chapter 6. You would do well to get a Bible, King James Bible, and actually look these things up. Oh, I know if you're a Catholic, you know, that I just said a great anathema there to actually pick up a King James Bible. That's a great heresy if you're a raised Catholic. You know, this is an evil book and, you know, throw holy water at it or, you know, hold up your rosary. You know, stay away from me. You know, <laughs> disobey your authorities there and uh, go out and actually get a Bible and read it. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You know how many uh, sorrows are in the Vatican? I don't care how connected and how with it and, oh, we're so powerful and we're that. You live in sorrow. You live in fear. Why? Because everybody in the system is expendable. I don't care how big you are, how powerful you are. The black pope, I like to call him arterial sclerosis. I know that's not his name, but Arturo Sosa or whatever. We like to, we jokingly call him arterial sclerosis. So hardening of the arteries, yeah. Much deep meaning there. He's expendable. He's expendable. Jesuits underneath him, they'd like to get his position as the sovereign general of the Jesuit order, the black pope. Pope Francis, don't tell me that there's people that don't want his position. Cardinals, bishops, archbishops, priests, nuns, monks, Franciscan friars, down through the list. It's all sorrow. It's a terrible system to get into. But if you want to get anywhere in the world and you don't want to reject Jesus Christ and you say, I want that power, I want that money, you better get connected to the Catholic Church. That's why lost people are so drawn to Catholicism. That's why they have over a billion members. Because there's that protection there. There's that uh, advancement. Look at how many people that Trump has put in to his cabinet, to his administration. Look at how many of them there are that are Catholic, that are Jesuit educated, just like he is. The third reason why lost people like being Catholic. Being surrounded by religious hypocrites makes the average Catholic feel less convicted about their own personal sins. Let me show you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Hey, you know, I, I might uh, kind of run around on my wife, but, you know, old father so-and-so here at my local church, you know, I go into the confessional. I know I can smell alcohol in his breath. I know he's messing around with little kids. So, hey there, father, don't you come down on me for messing around on my wife. I told you about that, but I don't know what you're doing. Hey, you know, I might uh, be a rather filthy woman, but I know that old uh, so-and-so over there, I know what she does. She's a real prostitute. She's a real filthy woman. But hey, we're all faithful Catholics. We all come here to this Catholic church. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can look around and I can see the hypocrites around me. Just like most Protestant churches too, I might add. They can go and they can look and say, oh, that guy's doing this and that one's doing that and that one's doing that. So who are you to come down on me for watching filthy stuff on television or looking at bad stuff on the Internet? Hey, at least I'm not like them and like them and like them. Let me give you some advice in closing here. Proverbs chapter 9, back to the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me, by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. Hmm. You will bear your own problems if you reject the Lord. If you say, well, you know, I don't want to go against the Catholic Church because it's, you know, I'd, I'd be ousted from my community because everybody's Catholic around here. Um, I don't want to go against the teachings of my Catholic Church that I go to. I can't come in there with a King James Bible because, boy, if my priest found out about that, oh, I'd be in trouble. Yeah, I'm a young person. I'm going to some Catholic school somewhere. I don't want to go against what Sister So-and-So teaches me, the nun that runs our class, because, boy, I could sure get in trouble. Do you fear God? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. 
well, you're never going to get anywhere in life. You'll, you'll never be any success if you go against the Catholic Church. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Um, it's better to trust God than to put my faith in man. Sorry. I fear the Lord. I want to have his wisdom. I want to have his understanding. I'm not interested in what the Catholic connections can get me. I'm going to give some links at the end of this video for people that want to know more about the Roman Catholic Church, want to see some of the studies I've done from Catholic sources showing what they really believe and uh, showing the falseness and the, of the Catholic system and, and why it doesn't line up with the teachings, not of, only of the King James, but also of their own Bible. Um, it's a contradiction. Okay, so and just you, you reject everything I've said, but just please remember, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But yet, the Bible gives you the number of the angels, and it's one-fifth of the current number of the supposed Catholic Church. That's a problem. I think that means that uh, you've been lied to as a Roman Catholic. You're told that it's the world's biggest church, and we have over a billion members, and things were a billion-plus strong. You can feel safe being part of that group. Uh, no, you can feel very scared being part of that group. That's the truth of the matter. Because there's less than 200 million people that are genuinely born again. And in heaven when John gets there. And don't tell me it was in the first century and there's more now or something. No, it's a future event. So, either you'll trust this book and you'll trust God or you'll trust man and you'll trust your church. The choice is up to you.